Hello to all. Welcome to Kalasha Foundation. Today we will be discussing your business economics chapter 4 unit 3 which is price output determination under different market forms. We have been discussing earlier uh, types of markets and we discussed price discrimination over there also. But as I told you in the earlier video that they have not told you everything about the markets in, in second chapter or what they call it as unit 2. So they have explained it in another chapter making it a different chapter that is price output determination. Okay, first of all, it's kind of like 25 to 30 pages of pages chapter. So probably you will not be able to cover the whole chapter in a single video. So there will, there will be parts of this chapter, a video parts. Okay, secondly, uh, a lot of things are mentioned over here like the, what they have said in the learning outcomes that you have to understand the characteristics of these markets and cite the differences okay you have to learn the characteristics and cite the differences you have to understand how the equilibrium price and quantity are determined in the short term as well as in the long run and this is very nice you have to they have made you learn the long run equilibrium long run is a very interesting uh, area in economics which is not which is not given you in your 12th standard syllabus probably the cbc guys have not allowed to study the long run equilibrium i don't know i have no idea about the icc person next is your what happens in the long run markets where firms are either incurring losses or and this is all long run economic profits and all super normal profits zero economic profits and illustrate the welfare of implication of each market form and what how are the implication how are we implying these kinds of markets what is the worth of these kinds of market is it uh, do, do we really need a monopoly do we really need price discrimination and everything is given over in this chapter okay another thing that is really very important that there are a lot of graphs so we'll be discussing a lot of graphs i'll ask you that it's not a uh, subjective paper uh, you will be given multiple choice questions i guess the thing is uh, still i'll ask you to draw your graphs in your copies in your notebooks anywhere you want to draw okay at least draw it once or twice so you get the idea how these curves move along and how everything is working in the market this will help you to understand the concept more clearly once you draw it yourself Another thing is when they ask you question why the AR curve or why the MR curve is lower than the AR curve or why there is a horizontal demand curve in the perfect competition market and what happens if price is less than average variable cost or what happens when price is more than average total cost. These are the things they will be asking you in your multiple choice questions. So uh, the thing is if even if you have if you don't remember somehow you forgot the exact answer so you can quickly make a graph on a rough sheet over there and check on uh, that what will happen if the sh shift curves uh, if the curve shifts rightward or leftward or when price is above ABC what will happen so the thing is key what I'm trying to say there are a lot of graphs so I'll ask you to understand and try to draw these graphs on your own also or together while watching this video next thing is uh, there are some graphs which are very hectic if you'll see and you'll think that how will you understand this so i have tried to simplify those graphs making my personal uh, applying a little bit of my personal approach to simplify your syllabus Another thing they have given a long given long explanation. So I will try I'll try to uh, what, what, do you, what do you say? Uh, compress your chapter a little bit and make you understand the key points and uh, I'll expect you guys to Read the whole of it on your own and I'll <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll try to make you understand each and every concept mm, so this was all about the introduction let's begin with the chapter okay 
okay uh, to uh, to begin with uh, we'll understand what uh, this what this graph is talking about okay so this uh, they have given a very nice introduction what they have said that price and quantity price of a product and a quantity of a product is determined uh, determined at a particular period which depends upon the market forces that are demand and supply functions okay uh, as well as the market structure what they are saying that the market structure characterizes the way the sellers and the buyers interact in the particular type of market and how equilibrium price and quantities are determined and so since there is a there are existence of different forms of market structure this leads to a difference in demand curves and revenue functions of the firm also these market structure mostly determine the firm's power to fix the price of its product this and the, uh, the all of these determines the level of profit maximization because different markets have different level of profit maximizations and as such because of these differences and characteristics of these different types of market structures a firm has to closely watch the nature of the market before determining their price and quantity uh, or we say before determining their equilibrium price and quantity okay so to begin with we are uh, all as always we are starting a chapter with perfect competition uh, the one and only known as the perfect market and very uh, what we call it uh, econ as i said in uh, i have said earlier if you remember eco economists love to discuss extreme examples so like perfect competition in a practical approach or in a real world is not generally available not everywhere prices are equal and not everything works as mentioned in perfect competition still uh, as said earlier uh, extreme examples keep the economist in business so uh, we'll be discussing this okay so they have talked about the features of perfect competition we have already discussed the features of perfect competition they were given they have given a small example what they are saying suppose you go to a vegetable market and inquire about the price of potatoes what you find that potatoes are 20 rupees per kg the sellers are selling it at a 20 rupees per kg you move further you think the price is high you move further to another uh, vendor or an, another shopkeeper he also tells you the same price 20 rupees per kg uh, you inquire on three four shops like that what you come to uh, a conclusion that the prices and the quantities are fixed and everyone is providing the same uh, same quantity at the same price and the same kind of product so what they are saying that there are a large number of buyers and sellers in the potatoes market all shopkeepers are selling at uh, selling potatoes at 20 per kg this means prices are fixed no one can change their price uh, uh, because and why this happened why no one can change their price because there there is a homogen homogeneity we call it homogeneity in the product that means all the quality quality of all potatoes are alike in general all the quality of all potatoes are alike unless you know where how the how certain pro, uh, shopkeeper has produced or acquired these potatoes maybe some farms have used organic fertilizers some have not used the organic fertilizers so there you can uh, you may differentiate but in general uh, these the quality of all these potatoes are alike uh, almost the same quality of potatoes so what they're seeing is uh, large number of buyers and sellers shopkeeper selling potatoes at 20 per kg so they have uh, listed down these characteristics these characteristics are large number of buyers and sellers okay the products supplied by firms are identical and or homogeneous every firm is free to enter and exit and uh, this there is a perfect knowledge of market conditions on the part of buyers and sellers both perfectly competitive markets have very low transaction cost and uh, and the perfect competition the firms individually are price takers okay these are some characteristics uh, if you want to 
I don't think I don't find the need of uh, explaining these implications. You have you have been studying it from a long time. Still, I'll be discussing quickly. So, uh, large number of buyers and sellers. So, since the, the, there is a large number of buyers and sellers, okay, each seller has its total supply and each uh, buyer has a total demand. These uh, these guys intersect these demand curves and the supply curves intersect to determine the price. And since uh, the since there are a large number of buyers and large number of sellers, so no small firm, uh, firm as in uh, no small seller and no small individual buyer can uh, is in a position to influence the price. Okay, so this is the implication of the large number of buyers and sellers. Secondly, the products supplied by the all firms are identical and homogeneous. Of course, uh, these are these products are perfect substitute are said to be the perfect substitutes of each other. All the products are identical. So if you buy from, from shopkeeper A or else you buy from shopkeeper B, it doesn't matter. Uh, it won't affect the quality of the product. And this is why these are identical products. And again, this is why uh, no single firm or seller or a buyer can influence the price so they can uh, increase their profits only by selling more and more units of output okay uh, the other thing every firm is free to enter and exit and go out of it okay so there are no legal or market related barriers in these type of markets and no special costs the thing is uh, since the firm faces since the firm has a price that uh, since the firm is a price taker so there is no you know what we say that uh, sometimes uh, it is very easy to enter these markets because there are no barriers since all are selling the same products everyone is selling at the same price so no one uh, want uh, is uh, you know uh, the existing suppliers are not feared of uh, threatened about the incoming sellers or incoming firms and uh, they are not even they don't even bother when these incoming firms exit the market because if anything in a, in a very simple manner you can say anything happens in a perfect market in a perfect competitive market happens for all the firms all the buyers and all the sellers so no one is uh, bothered and no one is threatened about entry and exit of any firm okay okay so we've discussed three features so uh, generally what happens when all of these three features are uh, satisfied this is what we call as I call it as a pure competition market okay this is a pure competition market when there are large number of buyers and sellers selling identical products and there are no barriers to entry or you can say there are free entry and exit okay Moving further, perfect knowledge about the market conditions on the part of both buyers and sellers. Okay, so what this implies is that the both buyer and the seller have the uh, perfect, uh, in perfect, or you know, all the relevant information they need for buying and selling the product or to enter into these transactions. For example, if you go to a market and buy, uh, let's say, a ten rupee, a rupee ten biscuit. Okay, a biscuit that is sold for rupees ten. A general biscuit let's let's call it paleji if you go to buy paleji for 5 rupees or 10 rupee packet you know exactly for how how much grams or how much weight you'll get and you'll exactly pay rupees 10 and you know the uh, every seller knows that my quality is same as the quality of the, any other shopkeeper so what happens here is that uh, both buyers and the seller have all the relevant information to enter into the transaction so this is what they call it as a perfect knowledge about the market conditions okay uh, the other thing is uh, very low transaction cost again very low transaction cost because uh, first of all sellers don't have to sell uh, don't have to incur transaction cost in order to you know what we call uh, attract the customers the thing is because all products are identical and sold at the same price so uh, the buyers are indifferent uh, to go in any shop okay so a seller would not be entering any transaction cost to attract the customers and buy products from his shop or his firm 
okay uh, same uh, thing applies for the buyers as uh, same thing applies for the you know uh, buyers as well uh, the buyers are indifferent about the sellers so they'll not be incurring any special cost let's say sometimes you buy things you buy some products that are cheap uh, available cheaper at some places let's say uh, what we uh, let's say uh, an example let's say you buy a book so there are certain markets uh, that's uh, that are providing books a little bit old uh, not very old but they're providing uh, they are in a very good conditions so these books are sold by those markets at a very low price and rather if you buy a sealed book there are certainly uh, the price is more more than that so if a, so if a buyer goes to such type of markets so he's indifferent he knows if he buys uh, a second hand book so he'll pay less but if he wants to buy a new book he'll go he'll buy from any of the shop nearby his location where the book is available so he'll not incur the transaction cost or let's say the transportation cost of going to the particular market where books are available for ch cheaper price okay uh, the other thing is under the perfect competition all firms are individually called the price takers okay price takers what do you mean by price taker what do we mean by price taker is that uh, since uh, there are the, the, these prices are fixed by the forces of demand and supply so we can say that the, the these firms take these prices from the market and apply these prices to their individual firms okay uh, we'll be discussing these in the graphs uh, this topic in the graph as well so what they do the <coughs> what they do is they take the price from the market uh, where okay let's i'll just explain it here only okay i'll explain it here let's say this is your demand uh, sorry this is your supply this is your demand this price is this is the price which is fixed over here so these this price will be applied this price will only be applied in your individual market forms and this will be your price for individual firms and this is your market Okay, so these firms are individual price takers. They take prices from uh, from the determined from the intersection of your market functions, your market forces, and uh, this is the price. And they will be selling any quantity at this price. Okay, so this is what they say that firms are price takers. They cannot change the price. They can only increase their profits or increase the uh, not even we, we don't even call it as profits we call it as uh, they increase their revenues only by selling more and more profit uh, more and more outputs okay so this is your this was your characteristics okay now we'll, then we'll be moving further um, and uh, lastly i'll just say uh, in reality there are very again uh, in reality there are very few markets that are very com that are perfectly uh, perfectly competitive and uh, most probably you can say the bonds market or the securities market where the prices are determined by the buyers and sellers okay uh, the price of bonds and uh, securities are in a perfect perfectly competitive market but even again those play those markets are influenced by a uh, hyper influence trade what they call it uh, yeah the big players influence the market by purchasing a large amount of stock at the same time okay so this is not we are discussing over here i will not get into that okay the second topic uh, is price determination under perfect competition how do you uh, how do a firm determine its price and output in a perfectly competitive environment or a market okay so uh, first of all the, the first topic they, what they have uh, mentioned is equilibrium of the industry so we all know and about the industry i have been saying this uh, repeatedly in this video that the industry is in equilibrium or determines its price where demand is equal to supply so this is your industry equilibrium uh, here is your supply here is your demand curve where the intersect is your price in quantity this is the equilibrium 
point where the a where the industry is in equilibrium okay uh, so we'll just read uh, read this paragraph industry in economic terminology consists of large number of independent firms okay each such unit produces a homogeneous product okay so there is a competition among the firms good produced by different units when the total output of the industry is equal to the total demand of course total demand and total output okay we said that the industry is in equilibrium the industry is in equilibrium okay so the uh, the price the price then prevailing is equilibrium price this is your equilibrium price and the firm is said to be in equilibrium when it's maximize its profits and has no incentive to expand or contract okay will be uh, i'll discuss this line uh, in the further, uh, further part of the video okay as stated above on the perfect competition the equilibrium price of a product is given determined by interaction of forces of demand and supply okay they are saying the same thing what i have said so we we'll move further okay so here they have explained again explained the graph i guess you'll read and understand that there is nothing i have to explain over here you know the industry what we call the industry equilibrium now this is your equilibrium of the firm again i have told you uh, that the price these these firms are price takers and they de derive the price from the market and apply it to their individual uh, firms okay so uh, the thing what we have to discuss over here is this part your uh, demand or the ar or the mr curve why the, uh, the d is equal to ar is equal to mr is equal to price <clears throat> first of all first of all uh, the thing is you want you should know that uh, since the price is fixed okay and uh, the buyers are indifferent about the sellers so uh, they will not be influenced uh, their demand will not be influenced by any other factor as well neither the price nor other factors since the products are identical and we know when there is an inelastic demand the demand curve is sorry when the uh, when the demand is perfectly elastic so demand curve is is a horizontal curve okay so this explains d second thing only in the perfect competition your marginal revenue is equal to the demand why because this demand in perfect competition is perfectly elastic it is a perfectly competitive environment and quantity sold can be as much as we want at a given price remember quantity can be sold as much as we want at a given price okay so uh, since the price is fixed let's say the firm sells one unit at rupees 10 since the price is fixed it will be selling two units at rupees 20 three units at rupees 30 and so on so if you calculate your marginal revenue first will be 10 okay second will also be 10 third will also be let's say 0 at rupees 0 okay so your uh, first will be 10 second will be 10 third will also be 10 your marginal revenue so you see your marginal revenue is equal to your price uh, or let's say let's say it is equal to the demand or equal to the revenue what you are generating so demand is equal to marginal revenue again what is average revenue average revenue is total unit sold total revenue total revenue is total revenue is rupees 30 okay and okay again i'll make i'll just make the table this is your average revenue okay so 0 to 0 10 divided by 1 is 10 20 divided by 2 is 10 30 divided by 3 is 10 you see your mr is also equal to ar okay so what we find here that in individual sellers market in a perfectly competitive form your price is equal to demand or you can say your price is equal to marginal revenue which is equal to average revenue which is also a demand curve because your demand curve is a perfectly elastic curve in a perfectly competitive market okay that is a tongue twister <clears throat> okay so where do we find equilibrium so the firm finds equilibrium where your 
your firm maximizes its profit uh, when the firm maximizes its profit it is said to be in equilibrium so we can see over here that the firm cannot maximize its profit by changing its price it can only maximize its profit by selling more and more output so you can say the firm is in equilibrium over here the other thing is that they have explained over here uh, if you come below if you have to read this on your own and this is nothing just the data to help those uh, graphs to support those graphs they are talking about conditions for equilibrium of a firm uh, the very first condition of the firm to be in equilibrium is to maximize its profit if you remember i have talked in the earlier videos a firm or any type of market maximizes its profit when your marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost okay when your marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost in this example since your marginal in this example you can say in this type of market since marginal revenue is equal to price therefore we call that the firm can maximize its output when price is equal to marginal cost okay and it also states the other condition that your know, mr curve should cut the uh, or mc curve should cut the mr curve from below this has to uh, why this happens this has two implications let's see over the graph over here in the short term competitive firm <clears throat> okay uh, okay don't look at that graph look at this in the short term profit maximization your individual firms derive your individual firms derive this price this price from the market from the industry okay uh, so this price is your demand curve as well as your mr curve as well as your ar curve now this is your marginal cost curve this curve is your marginal cost curve okay let me choose another pen this curve is your marginal cost curve since this curve is your marginal cost curve so the thing is firm can produce over at this point also a firm can produce at this point as well and at this point as well the firm will be producing at quantity 2 because even when marginal cost cuts the mr curve at point t or output q1 there still a capacity to increase the profits by selling more and more output because your marginal cost the marginal cost of the firm is still decreasing is still decreasing again more and more inputs are given more and more labors are given diminishing marginal return kicks in when diminishing marginal return kicks in your marginal cost starts rising from here and you stop producing at an output again you stop producing at an output where your marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue okay so what what happened over here just is you, you were producing over here you saw that your marginal cost is still decreasing you can expand your output and maximize your profit you kept expanding you kept expanding then diminishing marginal returns came and since diminishing marginal returns came uh, entered the picture your marginal cost started rising and you stopped at a point where your marginal cost was equal to marginal revenue so this is why this is the only reason uh, this is one of the most important uh, concept to understand uh, this is why your marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost a point where firms maximize their profit okay <clears throat> so this was your short run profit maximization by a profit by a competitive firm okay uh, one more thing i would like to explain you from my graph what i have drawn over here is this the firm sh short run uh, profit maximization okay so we all know okay let's just make a simple change over here this is a lo long run graph well uh, okay so what we'll do is ha uh, yeah this curve will go over here let's see here okay guys uh, let's understand this what just happened so this is your temporarily i'm drawing this line okay what just happened is this is your short run graph 
this is your mr curve or your price okay and this is your average total cost what you need to understand at this point is okay just give me a minute yeah what you what you need to understand is in the short run we have known profit maximization for any firm not in the short run as well it is applicable in the long run as well profit maximization occurs at mr is equal to mc okay so this is where it is mr is equal to mc but in the short run in the short run, and okay one more thing this is mr equal to mc and since your price is this since your price line is equal to your demand curve this is why your price is fixed at this point okay we'll see another uh, we'll see about this that sometimes uh, mr cuts M mc at some other point or some other level and price is at some other level okay this is this happens in other uh, types of market but this is not happening over here that the, the thing you need to notice over here is your average cost your average cost is at this point okay your average cost is at this point so what you need to understand uh, or let's say not at this point uh, your average cost is at this point okay your average variable cost is at this point so what you need to understand is that your average total cost for the production of the product stands out at this point this is your average total cost okay so in the short run firm is earning profits the in the short run firm is earning total economic profits we call it economic profits why do we call it economic profits because economic profits are different than accounting profits another thing so i'll just uh, highlight this over here that your firm is earning economic profit right the firm is earning firm is earning economic profits in this segment okay you get the idea okay you get the idea the firm is earning economic profits what happens in the long run what happens in the long run <coughs> yo okay uh, another thing you need to understand one more thing you need to understand before i explain the long run another reason why you need to Uh, produce that mr is equal to mc that if we take let's say if we take a point here if we take a point here uh, okay i'll use another color let's say we take a point we are producing at this point at this point somewhere here okay at this point somewhere here so a firm is uh, a firm will be earning profits okay firm will be earning profits I okay, cannot uh, mess this up. Just be a point. At point, let's say, let's call it a point A. Let's say a firm is producing at point A. So this at this point, your MR curve, your MR curve, this is your MR curve, okay, is above your above your MC curve. This is your MC curve. Okay. What I'm trying to say is, since your MR curve is above your MC curve. you are generating profits the firm is generating profits but if we uh, uh, but still you want to expand your production why you want to expand your production because till this point till q star till q star your mr is equal to mc that means you are incurring no losses you're not incurring any type of loss if you go if you go beyond this point if you go right towards q star you see that your mr curve is below mc curve your mr curve is below mc curve mc curve is over here and mr curve is over here you start incurring you start incurring losses you start incurring losses so what you do what do you do what you do is you start coming back towards q star when you were at this point you were coming towards this point and when you were at b let's say you were at b you came back to you you started coming back towards q star because your costs were rising you so you started decreasing your production okay so what we what do this say 
that this is why they say that MR is equal to MC is a point for maximizing the firm's profits. Okay, for maximizing the firm's profits. Now, what happens in the long run? What happens in the long run? Uh, there is a reason why these firms have zero economic profits or no economic profits in the long run under perfect competition is because in the short run your perfect competition we are making profits when price is above your average total cost okay but when firms start to make profits in the short run people outside the industry start looking with envious eyes okay okay this market is earning profits so what we'll do we'll also do this business we'll also enter this market so what happens in the long run new firms since there are no entry uh, no barriers to entry long in the long run new firms start entering the market when new firms start entering the market they increase the supply since supply is increased and uh, the firm has uh, the whole industry has been expanded the cost of producing increases cost of producing increases because factors of production become more pricey the price increase uh, there is an increase in fact uh, price of the factors of production again due to these your <coughs> due to these factors the, your profits start shrinking what happens here is that your profits start shrinking since your profits start shrinking what happens is your okay just give me a minute. okay what happens is your your average total cost curve start moving your average total cost curve starts moving upwards it starts moving upwards it starts moving upward it goes and goes and goes and it stops at this point it stop at this it stops itself at this point or you stop your production at that particular point you stop your production at that particular point where your average total cost is equal to price why do you stop your production at average total cost equal to price in the long run because if you start producing more what will happen you will start coming at these points where your average total cost will be greater than your price and you will start incurring losses so this is why uh, since new firms enter the market supply increases price uh, the selling price goes downwards and factors of production increase their price your profit sh profits start shrinking and now again since your average since your average total cost has increased okay since your average total cost has been increased and it has reached to a point where it is equal to price where it is equal to price okay <clears throat> where average total cost is equal to price in the long run you have zero profits there are no profits zero economic zero economic profits okay guys i hope you understand this is a very important concept and i've tried to explain it in most easiest uh, way i can help you with so still if you don't understand please let me know in the comment your feedback is very necessary for us to improvise on our videos okay and uh, okay so we will move further so you understand the whole concept of short run and the long run in the short run there are few firms your your price your average total cost is below something at this point you the, your firms earns profit this much okay when you start earning profit in, in uh, start earning profits in the short run new firms enter in the market because there are few barriers to entry or oh, sorry there are very less barriers to entry or let's say it's a free entry we have studied it is a free entry there are no barriers to entry no legal barriers to enter since firms start entering the markets your cost every total cost starts increasing it goes to a point where your price is equal to every total cost and uh, your profits are wiped out and you are you end up at zero economic profits in the long run okay i guess you guys understood that very easy i have tried to explain it very in the best easiest manner i could rest just let me know if you don't understand let's see what else i can do okay moving further moving further 
uh, what they are explaining. Okay, short run supply curve in the perfectly competitive market. How do, uh, how does uh, how do we generate a short run supply curve in a in a market? Okay, one more thing before that, guys. Uh, again, we discussed since your ATC is over this point, that this point in the short run. So uh, this much profit, whatever you earn in the short run, are called the super normal profits or or pro positive uh, economic profits okay and when you earn no profits uh, when your prices are equal to your average total cost in the long run we call it as zero economic profits okay uh, and uh, okay so short run supply curve in the perfectly competitive market uh, i have explained it in my way i hope you will understand so we have a we have set up the scene over here that this is your firms and this is your market okay so uh, we know that prices of particular firms are taken from the market you know firms take the price from the market but the supply curve is generated uh, or you can say the supply curve of the market is equal to the totality of individual firm supply okay so what happens over here is they have explained they have given this graph and this situation uh, over here also what they are trying to say are these three points uh, which they have which they have uh, what we call they have written uh, in these paragraphs i have uh, summarized it very shortly try to uh, explain this so the first point is where if your price is greater than p1 this point if your price is greater than is less than p1 sorry is less than p1 let's say over here your price is over here your, your price is at this point then your average variable cost is greater than price and none of your prices uh, none of your costs are covered of course because your cost is here your cost is at this point average even your variable costs are above your price since even your variable costs are above your price your your firm will stop its production they will enter a shutdown point since they will enter a shutdown point there will be no supply in the short term second situation when the price is greater than p1 or equal to p1 since the price is greater than or equal to p1 you can say that your variable costs are covered as we know if the variable cost are covered at least variable cost are covered the firm will continue to produce in the short run it may exit the market in the long run uh, when its uh, fixed cost are covered but uh, in the short run there will be a supply and the short run supply curve will be there third point is that third point is that when your price is when your price is greater uh, greater than p2 this point price is greater than or equal to p2 when price is greater than or equal to p2 your all your costs are covered and you are happily producing and happily selling in the market what the, what this graph what this whole setup is trying to say is the above graph these graphs show that until the price of the product is at this stage greater than p greater than or equal to p1 and less than p2 yours there will be a short run supply curve in the market since your variable costs are covered there is no shutdown firm shutdown point faced by these firms and the firms will continue to provide supply in the short run this is what they are trying to say because there your prices are above your variable costs and firm don't need to shut down their business okay uh, this is uh, mostly irrelevant you don't you don't need to uh, know that because since uh, uh, this is a very common sense uh, point in that since all your since your price price is at p2 all your costs are covered since all your costs are covered there will be a supply obviously you will be produ producing in the market so this is an important point when price is greater than p1 greater than or equal to p1 and less than or equal to p2 okay not less than equal to only less than p2 if it is equal to p2 your prices will be it, uh, all your costs will be covered right okay this this, this was the short run 
okay kind of complete form on profits uh, we have already discussed this super normal profits okay and normal profits or or your it is also called the zero economic profits profits okay losses losses are, or it is very simple see your average total cost is here and your price line is here of course since your cost is greater than your price you will be incurring losses so i guess this is nothing to uh, grind on okay guys uh, okay one more uh, one last thing long run equilibrium in the competitive okay so we have discussed this also we have already discussed the long run equilibrium market uh, over here when we were discussing the profits uh, when we were discussing the this graph okay so i'll just explain once more what happens over here what they are saying again in this graph if you if you'll read so you'll see in that they have also said uh, firms are in equilibrium in the long run when they have adjusted the plan okay uh, <clears throat> ah, uh, from this point if they are making super normal profits or positive profits in the short run that means your price is above your average total cost you are earning super normal profits new firms will enter and will be attracted to the industry this will lead to uh, fall in price and upward shift of cost curve due to increase in price of factors okay and the industry expand industry expand uh, it, industry will expand these changes will continue until until your atc stand into the demand curve when your atc uh, cost shift upward and price is equal to your uh, price is equal to your average total cost so since your price is equal to average total cost uh, there are no profits or very normal or normal profits what will happen uh, firms will make losses in the short run and they'll start leaving the industry in, in the long run this uh, when they start leaving the industry the this will uh, this will raise the price of uh, price uh, raise the prices of the product and cost may fall as industry contracts since the firms start leaving and uh, industry starts again uh, sh uh, again your industry starts shrinking or contracting until until the remaining firms in the industry cover their total cost and again earning normal profits so this is how your equilibrium mechanism works in your perfectly competitive market uh, these are the conditions you can read these and understand these as well on your own we have discussed in this part also this is your marginal cost curve this is your average cost curve okay uh, uh, you can discuss it either with a uh, short run marginal cost or short run average cost you can see as uh, here that uh, this is the same curve long run e either you take long run or you take uh, short run your marginal cost is cutting your marginal revenue curve in the long run also again when long run average cost curve is standing to your price or your marginal revenue curve or your demand curve you are incurring no profits or you can say you are in, in, incurring economic profits zero economic profits or normal profits and you are in equilibrium so this was guys i am since uh, this took uh, so long this is a very explanatory chapter each and every uh, thing i say is important i need you to <coughs> concentrate on this video okay and uh, if you if you may you can also watch this twice as well and guys uh, this is it i am wrapping this video since uh, it, it's already a 49 minutes video and this is it uh, we'll be start with uh, we'll start with monopoly in the other videos and thank you and this was your video this was a video brought to you by kalashi foundation and keep learning guys and sh like share and subscribe the uh, like the video share the video and subscribe the channel and tell your friends about this video all as well leave your feedback or how you want how much you understood how much you did not understood what are what things i need to improvise on the videos so uh subscribe the channel as well keep learning thank you